There are so many people I'd like to thank for this. Uh, first off to the Academy, without- Wow, uh, starting that music off pretty early, guys, huh? Uh, so anyway, first I'll thank you to the Academy. Without you, this award wouldn't exist and I wouldn't be here right now. Uh, okay, let's give me a little bit more time here. Uh, secondly, thank you to my friends and family, mom and dad. Uh, without your guys' support, I never would have done this project in the first place. And then finally, I'd like to thank everyone who's ever believed in the sh SHUT UP! As I was saying, Without all of your support and your kind words, I wouldn't have been doing this project still to this day. Thank you very much. Hey. See? The music can be beaten. Internet, welcome to Film Theory, where we have no idea why the Academy Awards are called Oscars. But guess what? No one does. Hollywood legend has it coming from either Walt Disney or the Academy's executive secretary, Margaret Herrick, who thought that the statuette looked like her Uncle Oscar. It's weird, right, that perhaps the most prestigious award in entertainment has a nickname that came from nowhere. Well, you may not know why they have their name, but you do know how to win one, provided you watched part one of this series where we covered winning Best Picture. If you didn't see that video, don't panic, you can watch it after this one. But what if you're not the director type? What if your talents are better in front of the camera? What if, say, purely hypothetically, that your name is Leonardo DiCaprio, and despite being one of the most talented and versatile actors in film right now, you cannot win an Oscar to save your life? Okay, so maybe not so hypothetical. Well, Leonardo, can I call you Leonardo? Actually, can I not call you Leonardo? Because every time I say it, it makes me think of a puberty-stricken reptile. Leo, I like you. I think you deserve to win. So you know what? This episode is for you. And if you just so happen to be watching this, you know, if the loyal theorists have gone ahead and taken it upon themselves to tweet this at you, if you're watching this right now and you happen to win your long overdue statue using one of the techniques I mentioned today, I wouldn't be opposed to you giving me an honorable mention in your acceptance speech. There's a lot to be thinking about up there, and I didn't want that one to be weighing on your mind. But before I start addressing your problems, Leo, I gotta talk to the ladies first. So, if you're a woman looking to win Uncle Oscar gold, what can you do? Well, the most surefire way is to change your name to Meryl Streep. She's been nominated 19 times as of this year and has won three, holding the record for most nominations and most wins for a woman. Not too shabby, Jessica Lovejoy. But okay, so you're clearly not going to transfer form into Meryl anytime soon. So how do you get your hands on that shiny, bald, gold guy? Well, if you're a woman looking to win, first, you gotta make sure that your role is one in which your sex is a major part of your character's story. For instance, 2013, Jennifer Lawrence in Silver Linings Playbook? Very sexy. 2012, Meryl Streep, the Iron Lady, Margaret Thatcher? Very sexy. Wait, whoa, that's too much information. It's also not why she won. No, what I mean to say is that the characters who grapple with being a woman and female-related issues tend to attract Oscar attention. Margaret Thatcher having to fight the male-dominated British government is a great example. So is Natalie Portman dealing with issues of self-image in Black Swan. Then you have Hilary Swank subverting female gender stereotypes by boxing in Million Dollar Baby, and then again in Boys Don't Cry, but this time dealing with transgender issues. So the channel Watch Mojo actually has a list dedicated to the most undeserved Oscar wins by actresses. And this trend explains two of the appearances on that list. Julia Roberts as the single mother and lawyer fighting the male-dominated legal system in Aaron Brockovich and Gwyneth Paltrow in Shakespeare in Love playing a boy, both dealing with gender-related issues and both getting undeserved Oscar gold, according to Watch Mojo. Now, not to get all 10th grade geometry on you, but this theory actually comes with a few corollaries. First, be a hooker. No, no, get off the street corner, Glenn Close. I know you're desperate for an Oscar win, but I meant play the role of a hooker. By the way, isn't it wild that Glenn hasn't won an Oscar? You might say, Glenn Close but no cigar. <laughs> 
I am so sorry. Strangely, prostitute roles are heavily represented among Best Actress nominees and winners. Of the 88 total Best Actress awards given out, 13 have gone to an actor playing a woman of the night. And honestly, it makes sense when you think about it. If Oscar voters want issues dealing with women overcoming adversity based on their sex, prostitute stories often are exactly that. Stop me if this sounds familiar. A down and out but strong-willed woman subjugated by men doing what it takes to rise out of her situation. Oscar-like. Corollary 2, be ugly. In an industry so fixated on looks, any actress who's willing to ugly herself up for a part tends to get extra consideration. Look at Charlize Theron, who wore liquid latex on her face and had <gasps> freckles airbrushed onto her for her Oscar-winning role in Monster. Then there's Nicole Kidman's prosthetic nose in The Hours, and all of the press around Anne Hathaway in Les Miserables talked about her losing 25 pounds and shaving her head for the part. Or how about Marion Cotillard, who shaved her eyebrows and hairline for La Vie en Rose, nabbing her the Oscar win. <laughs> Wait, Marion won an Oscar, but this is the best she could do for a death scene in Dark Knight Rises? My father's work is done. I'm alive, and now I'm dead. I'm alive, and I'm dead. I'm alive, and now I'm dead. Can we, like, take her award back or something? Ah! Oh my gosh, Leo, calm down. Why so antsy? What's eating you, arty grape? All right, all right, we'll talk about the guys for a second. What's interesting is that the ugly trend works in reverse for males. Men most often go home with an Oscar when their character is challenged by something that still allows them to look pretty. Most often, this is a mental disorder, but addiction or homosexuality also tend to work well. In fact, this trend is so strong, since 1988, 14 of 27 Best Actor winners were playing characters faced with significant mental or physical barriers to what people would consider a normal life. That's over 50%. Here are some highlights. Dustin Hoffman in Rain Man, Autism, Daniel Day-Lewis in My Left Foot, Cerebral Palsy, Al Pacino in Scent of a Woman, Blindness, Tom Hanks got to show off his handsome good looks two years in a row with his mentally challenged Forrest Gump and then his gay lawyer with AIDS in Philadelphia, Jack Nicholson's OCD in As Good As It Gets, Colin Firth's Stutter in King's Speech, and as recently Recently as this year, Eddie Redmayne's portrayal of living with ALS as Stephen Hawking in The Theory of Everything. ALS, huh? I wonder if he ever did an ice bucket challenge. <laughs> yep. Yep, you did. Hey, remember when that was still relevant? If you answered, it still is, then congratulations, you understood the point of that video trend. <laughs> Speaking of Stephen Hawking, though, that brings up another important tip. Just like with Best Picture, Best Actor and Actress awards are more likely to go to nominees playing a real person rather than just a fictional character. And this, surprisingly, appears to be a recent trend. For 20 years, up until 1992, 16% of acting nominations and 17% of winners were for actors playing a real person. Not that much. But in the 20 years after that, up until 2012, the numbers have doubled. Nearly 30% of nominees and 36% of winners. And in a fascinating twist, it doesn't really seem to matter who that real person was. It could be anyone from a criminal to a politician to a writer, kings, lawyers, housewives. It truly doesn't matter as long as it's a biopic. I could start listing them off, but seriously, it's a long list. So instead, here's a bunch of winners' heads photoshopped onto a Where's Waldo picture. Forget Waldo, it should be a Where's Leo poster. <laughs> oh wait, you would be looking forever because he still hasn't won. Leo. I'm a big fan. Seriously, and I'm sorry. I know that was a low blow, but you understand, it's comedy. Poor, poor excuses for comedy, but still, what do you expect? I'm a scientist, not a comedian. That being said, I know you're a bit disappointed with this video since you haven't learned anything yet. You're the probabilistic anomaly who has done everything right without hitting it big. I mean, mental disorder? Shutter Island. What's eating Gilbert Grape? Real person? Wolf of Wall Street. The Aviator. Catch me if you can. J. Edgar. Historic period pieces? Uh, Titanic much? And other better ones, too. No, Leo, I understand. You've heard it all before. You've optimized for everything, except for one variable that's holding you back and you can't combat and you can't control. Time. It's your age, buddy. If you're a man going for best actor, guess what? You gotta be over 40. The average age of a best actor winner is a bit under 44. Adrian Brody pulled off a freakishly early win at age 29, making him the youngest winner ever and the only one in his 20s 
nominees, but I don't know, Oscar must have been drunk that year or something. Only 32 best actors have been under 40. Or you could pull a Henry Fonda and win in your 70s, but he was the only best actor winner that old. Basically, Leo, concentrate really hard on your career now that you've hit the big 4-0, but rest assured, you have at least another four years before you should start getting worried. And hey, look on the bright side, at least you're not a woman. If you were, I'd say cash in your chips now, Gatsby, since to win a Best Actress award, you should be under 40. There's pretty strong evidence for there being a biological clock for winning an Oscar, as the average age of a Best Actress winner is 35 and a half. Know how many winners there have been in their 50s? One. The good news is that there are five winners in their 60s, one in their 70s, and even one, Jessica Tandy, at 80. So if you miss out on your golden statuette in your 30s, just take the next 20 years off and give it another go when they start putting over-the-hill candles in your cake. And before I move on, can I just take a moment to draw attention to the obvious double standard here? Women under 40, but guys over 40? It's interesting, right? Not so progressive, are you, Hollywood? It's like I said in the Best Picture episode, a lot of Academy voters are old men. Apparently we can add creepy to that list. Old, creepy men. But seriously, what's the point of all this optimization? Isn't this all dictated by who you know anyway? I mean, this is Hollywood, the town where you're only as good as the people you know, the people your agent knows, and the people you know are on a couch next to you, coked out, and you happen to get a blackmail photo with. Surprisingly though, this isn't the case. In a study done by UCLA and Harvard, because, you know, this is a subject important enough for two of the US's top colleges to dedicate your hard-earned tuition dollars to, they found that actors who had worked over the years with a wide array of Academy members were no more likely to get a nomination than those with fewer industry ties. It's pretty shocking, right? And that brings up one final question. What's this all for? A fancy paperweight? An ego boost? A shelf decoration that just collects dust for your maid to clean? For the on-screen talent, there's a little bit more at stake. Winning a big prize comes with a big bump in your asking price for future movies. Get this, male actors see an average salary increase of $3.9 million after winning the Best Actor award. Not a bad bonus. Yep. That's enough to get you a 30 second Super Bowl commercial or a three bedroom home in Los Angeles. Yeah, thanks a lot LA housing market. But then, what's the effect for women? Well, winning Best Actress also bumps up the asking price for the female in question by $500,000. One eighth of what it does for a man. Hey, I ain't no Patricia Arquette trying to stir up trouble. I'm just relaying the facts as I research them. I'll let you guys tear each other apart in the comments and trust you to do wage equality research on your own. <laughs> do wage equality research on your own. <sighs> That's probably the funniest joke I've included in this video. But now, time to go back to my boy Leo. Leo, I hope that this was interesting to you and can help you find that perfect role to nab Oscar gold. When you're up there holding your long overdue hunk of metal, staring forward into the future of a $3.9 million per movie pay increase, I'll be watching you proudly from home, doing a knowing little head nod, thinking back to this time we had together, saying to myself, I knew him when. And again, who knows? Maybe you'll never win. Maybe everyone is just jealous of your talent, looks, and $220 million net worth. And preventing you from achieving this one accolade is their way of stopping you from having everything you could ever want out of life. A cruel conspiracy by the shallow Hollywood machine. Well, rest assured, you now possess an honor none of them will ever have. As today, I present you with the first ever Theorist Seal of Profound Worth, bestowed upon people and things who truly excel at what they do. Cue the fanfare. Fanfare. <laughs> can't find good sound effects around here. Accept it with pride and let them keep their bald statue. They don't even know why it's named Oscar. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. Hey, did you see part one giving you the surefire way to earn best picture? If not, click here to check it out. And you should probably subscribe since, you know, you've made it this deep into the video. Must mean you liked it. Anyway, welcome back to the super amazing end card tournament. So it Admittedly, I may have given Leonardo DiCaprio a bit of a hard time today, but many people believe he's the most talented male actor of our time. If you feel that way, here's your chance to pan back. And if you hate the guy, well, this is the moment you've been waiting for. Cast your vote to either give
give him the Best Actor Award right now or deny it from him forever. And uh, let's throw in a third possibility here. The one that says, I don't care, he earns enough money anyway, I have better things to do with my time, thank you very much. You're all gonna click that one, aren't you? I know you are. It's okay. Anyway, click on one to choose, and once you're on the channel page, check out some more film theory. And subscribe. Do that too. It's a good idea. Seriously though, I love Leo's work, so I'm gonna click on giving it to him. But before I do, if you'll excuse me, I gotta go stalk Tom Hanks. Cause he just seems like such a nice guy. I'm coming for you, Tommy boy.